Hey folks, today we're taking a vintage 126 cartridge, opening it up and reloading it with 35 millimeter film. Fresh new 126 film is currently not available and not being manufactured by any company. So if you want to use an old classic like the 1963 Kodak 100 Instamatic camera, this is the option. Folks who watch this channel or other 126 shooters may say, well, why can't I use the Facmatic 35 millimeter to 126 adapter. The problem is that while this adapter is terrific in like the X15 and in the Kodak Instamatic 133 and uh, some other cameras, there are, are a few cameras like the Kodak Hawkeye 126 and a whole line of Instamatic 100, 104 that the Facmatic will not work. Pop it in. No, just, it's not, it's not, it's not an option for some cameras. So the only option you have is to either buy expired 126 film from eBay, which is iffy because film is expired, you don't know what kind of results you're gonna get, or buy a 126 cartridge that you can crack open and reload with 35 millimeter film. What you will need is a pair of scissors, tape, a vintage 126 cartridge, a roll of 200 ISO, 24 exposure film, and of course your camera. Now these cartridges, vintage on eBay, they come 12, 20, or 24 exposure. If you're gonna go through the effort of cracking this open, then why not get the 24? Why not? Whatever film you buy, you're gonna sacrifice the film in there, and you're going to slowly rock the plastic back and forth. I've already cracked this open, but you will need to crack open the cartridge carefully as to not break it. I mean, what you wanna do is you want to open it up by the seams. See that? This is this is opened up pretty well. So there you go. You open it up. You will strip out the existing expired film and what you will have is the backing paper. You also will need to get a hold of some patience. <laughs> Uh, and you will need to do this either in a completely dark room or what's known as a film changing bag. It's a bag that you stick your arms in and your the film that you're loading would be, you know, inside the black bag. If you have, you know, a bathroom with no windows and you could black out, black out the door, you know, you could literally sit on the bowl and uh, just do it in the bathroom. Who, who, who's on the, on the bowl, John? <laughs> Open your cartridge. You get your film ready by taking it out, snipping off the end. If you're home developing your film, you'll be able to take the film out of the cartridge when you're done and just put it in your development tank. If you are going to send your film to a laboratory, then you will need to hold on to this cartridge after you strip your film out. Now, I'm going to be doing this in light, but you will need to do this in black. Go all the way to the end. I'm going to cut a piece of tape that you're going to use to affix to the backing paper. Here's your last exposure. And at the end of the roll, you will not be taping the film to the end of the roll. Take this backing paper and you want to make the smallest possible roll that you can. Because ultimately, the, the rolled film is going to sit in this little well. So you make that little tight ball and you start rolling it. So we're at the end, that's a good place to put the film. And you take your film, okay, there you lay your film in. See that? No tape, start rolling, and fold the film in. So here you have your, your roll, and here you have your spool, and you know, you're just holding the roll, and you're just rolling it. And as you're doing it, the film is coming out of the cartridge, and you're keeping it nice and tight. Keep going, keep going. As long as you have this tight roll under control, Everything else is fine. You'll feel this in the dark. This is where the film was taped on the original roll. Now you take your scissor in the dark and your film and cut cut just the film, not the backing. Cut it. And as John just said, thank you, John, you cut the film, not the backing paper. And now you take that piece of, uh, keep, keep this roll tight. Now you find your piece of tape in the dark that you had. This width of tape should be the entire width. Do you see how these sharp edges are hanging off the side. Now I'm gonna alleviate that in the light by snipping off my film ends. Now we're at the end. Keep going, keep going. So here we have our empty cart ready for this big adventure. You flip it. You, 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 you put the film into this 
well right here. Look at that. Whoa. You put your spool end, which is still, the backing paper is still taped to the spool. Excellent. You drop that in. Nicey nice. You take your lid, put your lid on. Whoa. You take your extra piece of tape and you tape your cartridge together. And you see, I needed one more extra piece of tape. I should have had this prepared. I didn't to keep the cartridge together. And now we have a DIY 126 cartridge with backing paper. This will fit in any 126 camera. Here is your uh, roll of film. You want to keep this because when you're done in the dark, take the film out, attach it to this roll, and then roll this back into your cart if you're sending this out to a lab. And then when you send it out to the lab, tell them it's 126 format film because 126 shots are square. Here is your cartridge. You take a classic Kodak Instamatic 126 or any camera that's 126. You drop it in. You will advance, still advancing, till you get to the number one. Number one. In order to advance to the next frame, in some cameras, you will be able to just advance, but you see you get stuck. Some of these Instamatics cameras, you have to hold down the shutter button. Just hold it down as you're advancing. And you see how crunchy that is? That's really, really crunchy. Advance to the next frame. There it is, next frame, shoot. Advance to the next frame. Sometimes it works just fine. Okay, shoot. Now remember, don't take your cartridge out until you're done because when you take your cartridge out, you know, you'll be exposing your roll of film. This is just a test roll. But let's put this in a camera that's easier to see the back. How about this beef? The Keystone Everflash 20. We're going to do a video about the Keystone Everflash 20. And uh, John's going to shoot with this camera this weekend. Yeah. Now with this camera, as you can see, because of the 35 millimeter sprocketing, it just every two... Every second, it just keeps popping up. But with this camera, once you take your shot, hold down the shutter button, and then advance to your next frame. Look at that. Oh, my God, that's great. Oh, man, that's so terrific. What about, like, a cheaper plastic camera, like the Magimatic or the Keystone 125X? Get it in there. Take your shot. Next. Seems to be crunching its, <laughs> crunching its way through pretty good. Okay, so listen, here's the story. They're not, it's not going to be perfect in every camera, but, you know, the sprocket holes are very different than 126 film. Look at that. You see? 126 only has a sprocket between each shot. 35 millimeter film, look how many sprockets you have. So that explains why, you know, you may be saying to yourself, why, why does it keep, like, why do... Why do I have to advance so many times? It's because of the sprocket system. Hold down the shutter button and then advance to your next frame. Look at that. That's really it. Questions, comments down below. There are like millions of 126 cameras available. By doing this method of reloading an old cartridge with backing paper, you'll be sure that it will fit just about any camera. We'll see you next video. Good.